I'm here today talking with Jenny Hagen, and she is a severe weather expert. And you are actually based sort of in, uh, I guess, the tornado uh, central down there in Saskatchewan in Etonia. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what this season has been like so far uh, for our region? Well, it has definitely been a bit busier of a season. We've seen an early start to our storm season, especially after our record low amount of storms we had last year due to that drought cycle. So we only had one single tornado last year. So by far, this year seems quite a bit more active. Um, I understand that that is mainly due to the fact that we've had so much moisture uh, up to this point. And so that is spawning a little bit more of the activity that we see that goes hand in hand with those severe storms. Yes, uh, you need moisture to fuel moisture. So we need that moisture base there, especially within the crops. And once those crops start maturing, they send those uh, that moisture back up into the atmosphere. And that's what actually fuels a lot of our storms, especially in the prairies. What prompted me to uh, get in touch with you was actually just the number of social media posts that I had been seeing, uh, you know, people's pictures, videos of things that have happened so far. Uh, can you tell me how many uh, tornadoes and storms um, that have spawned tornadoes are we seeing so far? Well, we've seen numerous amount of tornado warnings early in the season this year. Uh, I can't count offhand how many, but there has been quite a few. I think. Uh, probably two dozen or so, and a lot of severe warnings. We've seen three confirmed tornadoes this year in Saskatchewan so far. Two more are being investigated from a couple weeks ago, and there's a possible another four that touched down near the Melville area yesterday. Sorry about that. Uh, so from what I understand, there hasn't really been much um, involvement on like, say, farms and in towns or anything that caused a great amount of damage. It's just been, uh, you know, so far they've been spotty in, in around the areas. Yes, typically here on the prairies, we're lucky enough that our population is spread out. So it doesn't hit populated areas very often. And that's actually why our tornadoes are usually rated lower because the EF system is based on structural damage at this moment. And there is a research group, Northern Tornado Project, that's actually looking at factoring in crop uh, health into assessing tornado strength in Saskatchewan. But we've seen a little bit of damage to some towns. Uh, Gravelberg, they're investigating that as a possible tornado at the moment, and a roof was ripped off a building there. So we're seeing a little bit of damage, but in general, a lot of it's to cropland, especially with hail. Estevan area saw just about softball size hail there with those tornadic storms. Now, the, the pictures that I had seen, they were probably golf ball sized and they sort of ranged in shape. So I don't know what that means, but probably something to do with the upper atmosphere. Um, and I know that next week uh, we're going to start seeing some really, really high uh, temperatures. And I understand the Humidex is going to be going up as well. And so I guess you're probably going to be fairly busy in the next little while uh, with the storms. Yeah, the models are kind of trending towards seeing some active outbreaks happening on the prairies. And with that heat packing in, you definitely got a lot more evaporation happening, which tends to fuel our storm season. And July is our peak storm season here in the Canadian prairies. Now, I guess it depends how hot we do, uh, how high the temperatures do get up to. Uh, do you think it could be, I guess, especially compared to last year with the, the very slight season that we had, uh, could it be a fairly serious season go that we're looking at going ahead? Um, I think every year usually brings some serious threats to the prairies. And it's not just tornadoes itself. I've seen amazing damage from things like plow winds that can actually rip structures apart just as bad as tornadoes. And hail is extremely dangerous as well as lightning to people. So you really need to encourage people to pay attention to warnings and watches because it's not something that you want to be trapped outdoors in when it hits. You've got golf balls falling from the sky. You know, you can end up with concussions and stuff from that. So you need to take these warnings seriously. 
And I guess as well, uh, you know, after having uh, sort of a low season last year, not that many uh, tornadic events, uh, we might be a little bit lulled into thinking that this year is going to be the same and maybe not take those watches and warnings as seriously. Yes, and I know a lot of people too with the way our warning system works in Canada. Um, you know, the warning area is actually quite widespread, which means there might be a few towns that aren't exactly in the track of the tornado that do get warned, just the way our warning system works. So that some, can sometimes make people think, well, you know, we got the tornado warning last time and nothing happened. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to get complacent because uh, it could always hit, right? And uh, I guess that's the other note. Um, if you do uh, get a watch or warning on your phone, uh, what, I guess, should you do right away? Um, watches now and generally are just kind of a heads up that severe weather might be possible in your area. And I uh, just <laughs> let the dog bark in here for a second. Uh, but uh, I generally do it on a like it's like a boiling pot of water, and you've got all your ingredients in there. But it's a matter of you know predicting where that first bubble is going to pop in the pot, and that's very difficult. So with the watches, it's just more or less you can, should be aware that severe weather is possible. With warnings, that's when people need to really pay attention to what's happening. Um, you know, get indoors as soon as possible if you're within that warning area. So you're not injured from hail or lightning. There's the old saying, you know, when thunder roars, go indoors because lightning is kills uh, two to three Canadians a year and injures many, many more. So that's something we need to be aware of. And for tornado warnings, um, you just to get into your house immediately uh, down into the basement if you have it. And if you don't have a basement, make sure you're in the most interior room of your house with no windows. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me on.